Hello everyone, my name is Bhaskar Gupta. I'm working as a technical product manager for VMware and today I'll be talking about what's new with VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.2. If you have seen some of my previous videos and blog posts where I talked about VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.1, you'd understand what this product does what's it's used for and basically some of the features I've talked about an overview as well. But if you haven't, not to worry. In this session, I'll do a quick recap of what's all about VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager, what it does. We'll talk about its features starting from 1.0, 1.1 and then we'll gradually move into Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.2 and talk about all the features over here. VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.0 was released in October 2020 to one of the partners with limited functionality, wherein only deployment was one of the features which was available. However, with VCPLCM or VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.1, which was released in May 2021, where the deployment day two operations including upgrade was available. However, it was available as a Docker based image. The features which are included with 1.1 are product deployment, importing an environment, retrieve information about the deployed environments, upgrade deployed products, certificate and node management. VMware Cloud Provider Lifecycle Manager 1.2 or VCP LCM was released on October 20th, wherein with VCP LCM 1.2 we have seen that three key features have been introduced. One, it is an appliance based deployment. As I mentioned earlier, VCP LCM 1.1 is available as a Docker image where one needs to deploy a photon based VM and import the Docker image. Now with VCP LCM 1.2, which is delivered as an appliance makes the deployment a lot simpler. Secondly, CLI in addition to API for operational flexibility. When you'll see that the deployment, upgrade and configuration of the products is now available through CLI in addition to API which was earlier. In addition to that, VCP LCM also supports the latest version of products such as VMware Cloud Director 10.3.x and Virilize Operations Manager 10 and Tap 2.6.1. Deployment of VCP LCM 1.2 is pretty simple like any other appliance. All you can do is download the VCP LCM OVA from my.vmware.com. Uh, you can use the OVF tool for the same and deploy the VCP LCM in vCenter. Download the product binaries which you want to deploy or manage like VCD usage meter, VDOF tenant tab or IBTMQ and set up the binary structure and NFS which I have discussed in my previous blogs or you can refer the documentation about it. Now upgrade or reinstallation if you want to talk about upgrade from VCP LCM 1.1 to 1.2 is not available. The docker image was upgraded by replacing the container. Now the virtual appliance replaces the docker image subsequent upgrades will be available via in-place upgrade. And talking about the features, they remain the same like 1.1 as I discussed earlier. The VCP LCM CLI provides all functionality of the REST API directly to the command line. This makes it easy to integrate the lifecycle management task to scripts and pipelines. To get started, the CLI features an environment designer that helps define the initial environment payload for deploying a product. The designer is started with the following command VCP LCM environment design. It then shows available options that are chosen by specifying the defined character. Let me show you a quick demo using VCP LCM 1.2 and CLI how to deploy VMware Cloud Director 10.2.2 and upgrade it to 10.3. What you see here is my lab environment which is VMware Cloud Foundation 4.2. Here I've configured um, NFS as you can see here VCD-4.NFS which is required for deployment of VMware Cloud Director 10.2.2 and upgrading it to 10.3 for this demo. Let's start the deployment. I fast forwarded these steps as it's pretty simple like any other appliance deployment we have provide all the compute resource information the storage the network as well and finally the credentials for vcp lcm admin 
Our next will be presented with the details for NFS share. This is where you provide the NFS share details uh, where all the product binaries will be copied and the networking configuration details and hit deploy. As you can see the deployment is in progress. So once this is deployed and powered on, you can log it to vcplcm host. It will automatically restart once and you are good to go. Here we have already opened an SSH session to vcplcm host as you can see here. And since the repository is already mounted, we can see the folder structure here and all the binaries which has to be copied like vcd as you can see here, all the versions and now we'll start the deployment using environment design as displayed vcd deployment has been initiated and we are deploying version 10.2.2 provide the admin password admin email domain name node count so here we'll be deploying vmware cloud director with two cells the first node details the host name IP address 8080 for the first node so as the subnet port group details ETH1 interface details here we don't need to provide the uh, network configuration for the second node as it will take the subsequent IPs by default if you want to change it you can always edit the design in the JSON file and save it and execute the deployment DNS NTP details here NFS mount for VMware Cloud Director which has to be pre-configured the license load balancer details here this is the target vm vcenter details where the vcd will be deployed user credentials data center so as the cluster and its pool details the data store you can type in V to validate the session as you can see here uh, my session had expired so I had to re-log in to this PLCM again so the validation is in progress for what the details I have provided and it succeeded now I can save the design in a JSON file so that I can use it for further deployment or refer it and the same you can see here I have saved it to temp with that we we'll start the deployment by typing D as we can see the deployment is in progress the environment deployed succeeded and there are multiple uh, subtasks like the pre-validation and post deployment some validation task now deployment hasn't started now it's in progress right now we'll be able to see the overview of deployment as you can see here cell 1 is getting deployed eventually we'll also be able to see cell 2 getting deployed as well and here cell 2 is getting deployed as well it's been powered on so both the VMs have been powered on now configuration of certificate is in progress an import environment has been succeeded as well deploy validation have been succeeded and configuration product has been succeeded as well so these are some of the subtasks which it carries out for a successful deployment so importing the environment post deployment have been succeeded so overall status has been completed successfully as we can see here the final status is showing success 
now we should be able to log in to VMware Cloud Director to verify what all components have been configured or whether they have been configured properly here we are logging to the load balancer URL with the credentials provided for during the deployment we'll have a look at the versions so you can see that two cells have been configured already and the version is 10.2.2 now we'll go ahead with the VCD upgrade from 10.2.2 to 10.3.0 using the command what you can see on screen right now once we execute this upgrade command we'll return a task ID as you can see task ID 14 and this command will get the task on the job details based on the task ID here the status shows in progress for the upgrade eventually this will also show us all the subtasks by which we can troubleshoot if at all any task is failed and we can rerun this command again after fixing those issues so the overall status is in progress and using the command we can get to know a granular details of all the tasks so upgrade preparation is in progress right now so during the upgrade process what it does it takes a snapshot of the VCD cells takes a uh, backup of the database as well and post successful upgrade it will um, delete the snapshot and the backup of the database and there's an option to roll back as, as well as we can see the upgrade has been completed successfully now we'll log into the same URL which we had logged in earlier with the same credentials and verify the version Well, the version has been upgraded to 10.3.0 as you can see here as well so the upgrade has been successfully completed well that's all about vmware cloud provider lifecycle manager 1.2 and what's new so we have discussed all the features which are available with 1.2 we talked about 1.0 and 1.1 as well so if you have any more queries regarding the same please feel free to reach out to our slack channel here or can reach out to us anytime and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you for watching this video.